Ladies and gentlemen, we are currently holding for further traffic clearance. Check out Kristen's new website, MagicalJourneysVacations.com for all your vacation needs. Disney, Universal, Cruise Lines, and more. Thank you for traveling with us. MagicalJourneysVacations.com Have her book your magical vacation today. Welcome, one and all, to WDW After Dark, your weekly panel discussion show bringing you everything about Star Wars, Marvel, the Disney parks, entertainment, all about the Disney uh, company. And my name is Al John Go, joined by our panel of talking heads, Jeff, Kristen, and Eric, the four musketeers, the fabulous four, they're here. We're all here, and uh, Happy New Year. I know we've had a little bit of a hiatus, but we are going to get into the latest Disney headlines, and what a great week to come back to the interwebs. Uh, We have a lot to talk about in terms of Star Wars and Pandora, the Disney parks, and new restaurants opening up at the Walt Disney World Resort. But before we get into all of that, let's first remind you that our show is available and iTunes, also YouTube, we have Stitcher Radio and other podcatchers out there. Uh, tune in and you can like and subscribe to our show in, in our entire uh, back catalog of uh, webisodes and podcasts there at www.afterdark.com. You can also support our program because we bring it for you for free every single episode. Uh, we would appreciate you supporting our show by liking, subscribing, and sharing it over social media and shopping using our links there at www.afterdark.com. You've got Amazon links there. Just click on the banner. Uh, it's but if you uh, if you got a mobile device, just go hit the the uh, web version of it. We're gonna try to get those hot links in there for you as well, so you can do it from your mobile device. And every time you click on that link for Amazon, when you click on our links to Fandango, so you can get your tickets to Beauty and the Beast in IMAX 3D, whatever you want to see it in, um, as well as the uh, other shopping links there, we get a little kickback from those fine folks because they appreciate us promoting their brand on our program. It doesn't cost you any more. It just simply means that you like us so much that you want to help us out and uh, and throw a little coinage into our tip jar, if you will. Once again, your one-stop shop to shop for everything Disney, Marvel, and Star Wars, your books and your movie tickets and all that there at www.afterdark.com. And also... If you're planning your trip to the Walt Disney World Resort, Disneyland, or uh, dare I say the Devil Park over there, Universal Studios Orlando, uh, or Hollywood, Kristen is going to be able to help you out with MagicalJourneysVacations.com. She's got all kinds of great deals for you. And in fact, if you call her, she's going to give you that free quote, and she would appreciate it uh, if you booked your uh your vacation with her. She's got a lot of expertise in that. She is a dining guru, a travel guru, and she will save you money. Uh, much like she does for the staff here of this program. So don't forget, check it out. The banner is also located on our website at www.afterdark.com. And now on with the show. WDW After Dark presents Disney Discussion, a roundtable panel. Well, Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, I am Al John Go, lifelong Disney fan, uh, joined by our talking heads, our panel, if you will. Uh, we're here with Jeff Davis. Happy New Year. <laughs> it's hard to say that after, what, a month already? I think I'm still saying it to a lot of people at work I haven't seen, so it's uh, it's okay to still say Happy New Year. Can I, I mean, can uh, I still say Happy New Year in February? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, definitely. Happy New Year. Did you, <laughs> Happy New Year to you. We're going to talk about how uh, your New Year uh, has been so far. Also joining us is our travel guru, Miss Dining at Disney.com herself, Kristen. Hello. Hello. 
there's a lot of great restaurants opening up at Walt Disney World Resort, huh? Yes, there is <laughs> a lot going on when it comes to food news. All right, Tons so we're going to talk. It. We're going to talk to Kristen about that. Also joining us, the mighty Marvel geek himself, the host of the Sorcom Review there in Source of Radio, Eric Allen. Hello. How you doing, buddy? Seems Good like it's been you. like a whole year since we talked. You know, I get these. Um, it definitely has almost, you know, we've been gone for the holiday hiatus and then I'm getting these DMS and I'm sure you are too from people uh, on social media. Hey, is after dark gone? Is, are you guys going dark? No, we made a post. I made a post on our Facebook page just a couple days ago saying that we we're going to return this week, but um, it's good to have everybody back. It's you know, good to be missed. Yes, it is good to be missed indeed. So uh, this particular program, we're going to give you some Disney headline news. There is a lot going on uh, with the Walt Disney World Resort. Um, you know, so I tell you what we can do first before we get into the huge, huge headlines. Let's first talk about the couple of restaurants that have opened up there at Disney Springs. Kristen, you've got the latest. I do. And there's actually two of them that just opened. Uh, the first one is Planet Hollywood Observatory. Now they completely gutted this place, redid all of the interior, the exterior. It looks very nice, very modern. There's even outdoor seating now. Uh, it's along the back side of it. So the side that faces like town, uh, uh, town center, that is what's going to have like the open seating and stuff like that. Um, you, you have a nice view of what's going on construction wise right now of the Edison uh, from that from that view. But uh, updates to everything, including the menu. Uh, one of the celebrity chefs that you may know, Guy Fieri, he has done a little bit of work on their menu as well. He's got some over the top burgers and sandwiches. Uh, that you that. can enjoy with French fries. Um, one of them is a burger that has mac and cheese on it. We did the one that was called Mayor of Flavortown. Um, burgers are good. I will say one thing about the change in the menu. The prices also have a change. They did increase. So a burger is about $20 now if that gives you an idea. There's also over-the-top desserts. They've got three milkshakes on the menu. Uh, two of them we tried. One of them was a cotton candy filled with all kinds of goodies. There was like a lollipop, cotton candy on top. There's frosting on the outside of the jar there with sprinkles and jelly beans. So it is definitely a sugar rush right there with those desserts. They're uh, it's truly insane. If you do like their world famous chicken crunch, uh, which has what they call crunchy sweet coating, it is made with probably generic version of like Captain Crunch uh, <laughs> cereal on it, but it's actually pretty good. We did have that to sample as, as well. So uh, soon I will have the full menu on uh, dining at Disney, but I do not as of yet. Uh, as well as a review to go along with our our little excursion we had there. Yeah, we ate there. It was uh, good good times. And the most recent one to open, which was only like a week or so afterwards, uh, is Paddlefish. It opened on February fourth. It replaced Fulton's Crab House. Uh, the chef is still the same. You still have Executive Chef Mark Bohr at helm, and the restaurant itself the exterior the interior and the menu have all been overhauled um there is a brunch menu a lunch menu dinner they have a seafood boil menu there's even a late night menu that you can enjoy as well as beverage and a wine menu and i do have if you go to dining at disney if you look for paddlefish you will find some pictures of some of the food and the drinks as well as you can click and view all of the menu items there as well the restaurant is open daily from 11 30 to 11 p.m uh, there is a rooftop deck that's where you can get your drinks in your late night menu at and that's open till 1 a.m so if you're looking for the late night bites that is a good option for you now all right. 
A lot yeah, of those restaurants have been gone, and those restaurants have been under refurbishment for nearly a year. I mean, originally they were supposed to; it was only supposed to be like six months, and it took a lot longer for them to do those because originally it was supposed to open in the, in the summer last summer. So, now, it's Jeff, nice to see you, them. Did you get a chance to go at least uh, see? You, you haven't been a chance, or you haven't been there recently, have you? Since they've opened. Uh, not since Paddlefish or Planet Hollywood has opened. Okay. Uh, I have not seen it. It wasn't open back in uh, November, but, uh, you know, I, I do love a good burger. I do love some good fries, but a lot of the buzz that I'm really hearing about is Paddlefish and just the quality of food that they have got there has really stepped up and so many people have been enjoying it. So, uh, here in a few weeks, I'm going to be there in Orlando. And so maybe I'll, I'll have an opportunity to go over there and check it out and, uh, and see what it's all about. I'd be very excited about that. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on that because Kristen and I did eat at Planet Hollywood when they opened up, and it is quite a difference from uh, where they were. Now, Eric, have you eaten at the old Planet Hollywood or at uh, Fulton's Crab House back in the day? Never have eaten at Fulton's Crab House. I have eaten at the old Planet Hollywood. Uh, it was it was good, but I put it in the category of places you go for the atmosphere more so than the food. Mm. You know, I, I told, uh, I told Kristen and uh, we were there with Tony Castelnova and, and John Donahue of uh, the Disney parks podcast, as well as uh, you know, John's wife and, and uh, Tony's mom. And I said, you know, the thing about playing in Hollywood is it looked like saved by the belt threw up all over it. You know, it looked like 1989. The carpet was so dated you know, the colors literally look like the Max, you know, just the Max. Colors. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 This is like the old, the old cafe diner that screech and, and, and the preppy would, oh my. right. It would look yeah. very safe by the bell. And then, you know, you come to this and it's very modern. It's very sleek. Um, the color palette's very good. They have the HD projection screens on the wall and everything. So everything looks very modern and, and I love the way it fits into. Did the they world. stay true to the whole, you know, uh, areas where you know old movie props or costumes and everything else were throughout the gone. Font? Most of it's gone. Okay. It's, well, there is there there is there are right like on. shadow boxes. There are they do have some displays up. Okay. Yeah, okay. but most of it most of it's gone. It does not look like the disaster that it used to be. It's so, much much more classy looking. Okay, so let me ask this question. Do you think that the new theming, the new decor is something that runs a danger of being dated in the near future as well? No, it's very, it's got a very clean look to it. Yeah, I will agree. Uh, and you can uh, check it out for yourself. And like I said, Kristen's going to have all that there at dining at disney.com, and all of that is there at Disney Springs. Um, uh, you know, try a dessert. Just try it and take a picture of it. I, I Kristen took pictures. I know that. Uh, yeah, when was the last time we said try it on this program? I don't remember. Yeah. Try it, but uh, <laughs> try it. You might like it. So uh, thank you, Kristen, for that update. And don't forget too, the Dining at Disney podcast. Kristen, you and Bubba finally got a chance to hang out, and uh, you experienced things at Disneyland as well over the past four <laughs> weeks. Uh, you That's got true. rained out over there at Disneyland, did you not? Oh, yes, 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 yes. They, uh, the park. they had to All close that. the park early. What What was great is they said, we're going to close the park at 7. Guess what time the rain stopped? 7. seven. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the, uh, the the video that Bubba put up on uh, on Facebook. And uh, he they were announcing, you know, Disneyland's closing at this time, everything else. All of a sudden, I hear the Marty Moose voice come from uh, from Bubba. Uh, from uh, uh huh. Parks closed. <laughs> yeah, Moose out front. Should have told you. <laughs> so, uh, even though you know your day was cut short and and you had to leave, he still had a great attitude about it, and so that was fantastic. That well, it was fantastic. funny. We were we had just left a Jolly Holiday because Bub and I were like, we don't have any pictures together for dining at Disney, so we went into Jolly Holiday and got a photo. Um, and we're leaving the park, and I'm talking to Taylor and Michelle, and all of a sudden we're like, where'd Bubba go? And we see Bubba in the middle of the street, and we're like, yep, yep, 
he's 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 gone live and then of course we saw the video afterwards of what he what he had done <laughs> But he's like walking down the middle of the street with his phone and we're like, okay, bud. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Very it's nice. like Jim Cantori out there in the, in the weather channel. It's like, I'm walking down Main Street, USA. I'm up to my waist in flood water. And <laughs> you know, the, the, the uh, Splash Mountain boats are coming behind me and, and everybody's just trying to make a break for it. And we're just thanking God that it's a small world is completely flooded. Pretty now much. I will say, Eric, it is not. It was nowhere near as bad as it was with Tropical Storm Debbie when we were there. Yes. Oh, good lord! I, I hate to say that, but I really enjoyed that trip. <laughs> why do you, why <laughs> I, do you hate I, to say it? <laughs> I hate to say it because it sounds so wrong. It's kind of like, oh, I really loved the trip we took when we were rained out by a tropical storm, but. <laughs> The, the thing is, that is the th that is what happens when a rainstorm hits Disney parks. You have a lot of these people who, you know, they'll just they'll huddle in their hotel rooms, or and they won't go out. Hmm. But all you gotta do is throw on a poncho, channel your inner Gene Kelly, and you practically have the park to yourself. Or right. you just go, it's raining too hard, so what? It's warm enough to not even wear the poncho. Just walk around soaked all day. I don't think I could handle that. <laughs> when the skibbies get squishy, that, no. Ooh. <laughs> That's Ooh, just an uncomfortable there. feeling. You went there. <laughs> okay. Well, that said, let's move on to other topics here for discussion. Jeff Davis you got the latest when it comes to Avatar. We've got a we've got a hard date set already for the opening, do we not? We've got a hard date, and and the thing is, the weird part about it is when Disney decided to do this because they were talking about their quarterly earnings. You know, the very first earnings for 2017 fiscal year, and you know there were some increases uh, for revenues for parks and resorts, but when it came to you know attendance, things were down. When it came to resort occupancy, it was slightly down, and a few other things. But they still earned a little more money because of park ticket increases, uh, food cost increases, so forth and so forth. So I guess Bob Iger decided, hey, this is the best time since we're talking about things that are down. Let's talk about a couple of things that are up and positive that's coming to the, you know Disney parks. And he you know talked about Pandora, the world of Avatar. We've been waiting and waiting. You know what it's like when it comes to Disney construction. We've seen what's happened when they try to build garages. We've seen what's happened when they tried to put together the new area of Fantasyland. And so when we first heard about Pandora, we just wondered, when's it finally going to happen? What's going to happen? May the 27th. And we had noticed a few weeks ago there were some blackout dates going on for some different things at Walt Disney World. A lot of people started scratching their heads going, wait a second. Why are they blacking out dates when Pandora is so close to being done? Oh, yeah, that's why. Because <laughs> it's going to be happening Memorial Day weekend. So May oh, the 27th. Geez. Fantastic time. I mean, you've got the Navi River journey that's going to be happening going to be fantastic then you've also got avatar flight of passage it's going to offer guests a, a thrill ride experience you've got a brand new restaurant i don't know if it's quick service i don't know if it's table Kristen, you'll have to help me out here if you know uh satu lee canteen i guess is how you pronounce it i'm not exactly sure but cool. don't, don't know if it's a sit down or if it's a, a, a quick service but i'm looking forward to that uh, you can get a drink over at Pongu Pongu, or you can shop for some Navi cultural items like toys. You've got uh, science kits, probably stuff themed more to Pandora and the Navi themselves. We need All that's going to be over at, uh, yeah, stuff like that. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, so I'm sorry. Have you ever gone into a, a gift shop at Disney that didn't have it? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Plenty of plenty of plushies all over the place. Uh, wind traders. This, this may or may not. I don't know. I don't know. You never know. This may or it, may not. Plush Navi that you can take home. I I think Eric's right. You're probably going to see it. So yeah, probably. That was really exciting to hear about. And I know there's probably a really good possibility if you're an annual pass holder or if you're a DVC member, you're going to have probably an opportunity for the soft opening statuses, like they did with the new Fantasyland area, for you to go in and take a look, get to experience some great things. But that wasn't all. 
And the next thing that they talked about, a lot of other people have been wondering when, 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 because Disney has not said a word as to whether or not they're going to be opening a certain year, a certain month, anything else. Star Wars, Star Wars Land, both Disneyland and Disney's Hollywood Studios at Walt Disney World opening in 2019. The thing is, we don't know when in 2019 that's going to happen because, well, I don't even think that Disney knows when it's going to happen. And I think they're probably on schedule right now. They're just moving a lot of dirt around in both of the areas. Some things are starting to kind of, you know, take shape just a little bit. You see right there that Al John showing you BB eight, moving some dirt himself yep. uh, as he goes through the area. But it's up. really, it's really, really exciting to know that we only literally have two years to have to wait. If I'm going to guess, it's either going to be, summer or it's going to be in the fall that I think the new Star Wars land at both Disneyland and Disney's Hollywood Studios is going to open up because they're going to want huge attendance for this. They're going to want a lot of people to come out and see it. And of course, the summertime and when you have food and wine festival, those are two very big times for people to come out and they want to have it available for the holiday season for Christmas and everything else. So aside from things being down a little bit, when it comes to park attendance, when it comes to a few other things, there are two great things that came out of this quarterly earnings report uh, with Bob Iger. And um, that, that was really about it. I I'm kind of curious now. We know that Bob Iger has kind of dipped his hand into the political area uh, within the last uh, couple of months. And uh, I'm, I'm just kind of wondering when he's finally going to step down as, uh, as CEO or if he is going to still step down as CEO because I saw a report on HLN today with Robin Mead. She was talking about big question mark next to it. Is Bob Iger, Iger still stepping down as Disney CEO? So I guess I that's kind of say, up. In I want to say I saw, I've seen a report within the past couple of weeks that he has put off his retirement again. Again. Okay. See that, that, that made me wonder. I just, okay. This is what I think. First of all, I don't think star Wars in studios will be complete by then i have my doubts as well we've seen what's happened with rivers of light look at rivers of light how many how long have we had to wait well, literally it was supposed to open up last construction, year Construction. i will say because i've seen i you can see the construction from certain attractions in disneyland of how theirs is going along I think theirs will be complete yeah. in 2019 but i think it's going to be spring of 2020 before we see studios I'm in Done. full agreement with you on this. I am in full agreement. I mean, and I think that's when Bob Iger will retire. I think he will. He will at that point once they are all complete. I say in 2020 he retires. It's good. Possible. Okay. Yeah. I've been looking up uh, story news stories about his retirement, and I found one on Fortune where where uh, Iger says he's quote unquote open to another contract extension. Eric, you seem to be breaking up on us, but I uh, believe you said you, uh, you found an article where he said that he is open to a, a, a contract extension. Is that what I heard you say? Yes, that's exactly what I said. Is that, uh, am, am I breaking up still? Yeah, you sound like the Borg. Yeah. Ah, uh, crap. Okay. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, Eric. You may have to reconnect. I hope your internet it, connection is And it makes me wonder, is it because of Star Wars that Bob Iger is wanting to stick around, or is it because he has not found the right person to succeed him? I think, yeah, I think you're right. CEO, Jeff. I think, you know, I think it could be a combination of things for one, because I know that he, and this is not a political program folks, but I know that, you know, uh, reports are that he had been tapped by this current administration yeah. uh, to um, uh, be a uh, advisor or be on the advisory committee of sorts. So I know, and 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 this should, uh, for people that follow Disney, people that follow this podcast, this webcast, know that uh, he has been uh, looking, as you said, had alluded to, uh, stepping into the political realm, uh, as it were, but now becoming a political advisor over the course of this next term, I believe, I think you are right, I think it'll be 2020, 2021 before he he decides that he's going to leave because I believe as as um, being a part of that board, he's going to have to continue to uh, 
to work at Disney to strengthen that company. And I think too, as you alluded to, he's also looking for that successor. And there've been people that have come and gone or have been cross training to do other jobs. And I don't know if, uh, if those people are really the people that uh, he wants as, as he continues to search and see what kind of stuff these people are made of. Yeah, no doubt about it. There's been plenty of people within uh, the ranks of the Disney company that have been groomed in certain areas uh, to succeed him as the CEO. Um, but maybe they're just not where he wants them to be as of yet. Maybe, you know, Bob Iger wants to see the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World come and go and then step down. Um, there's a lot of different stuff on the horizon for both for all the Disney parks, you know, with Shanghai just opening up and, and, and all the stuff coming to uh, both Disneyland and Walt Disney World. It wouldn't surprise me to see him all the way to 2021 and, and be done with it after that. But in the process, uh, we do have some fantastic things on the horizon for all of the Disney World fans and Disneyland fans as well. If you're not excited about Pandora, you really need to. And and I, I said this in my show today. <coughs> if anything, now is the best time. Now is the best time to go ahead and watch the movie Pandora. Because, uh, I'm sorry, Avatar. Avatar yeah. when, <laughs> when you step into that area, you want to have that connection by seeing the movie or seeing something or some type of stuff that Imagineers have put together that you recognize and that you can connect with. And only if you see it the one time, just to hear the music. The music is fantastic. The guy that put the music together was unbelievably wonderful. I mean, he died about, I think, about seven or eight months ago. I can't remember how long ago it was. Uh, Somebody needs to make a Cliff Notes version of that movie. You want to? You don't want to have to watch the whole thing, so you can. Uh... No, it's three hours long. I can hardly <laughs> sit through Star Wars movies or Pirates Kristen? of the Caribbean. It's even longer. It is even longer, Kristen? but it's a payoff in the end. So, um, definitely, see, go ahead, Eric. You want a Cliff Notes version? One word for you: Pocahontas. Basically, <laughs> Pocahontas. Yeah, it's Pocahontas. Pocahontas in space. That's what. That's what it is. But watch the movie. Get that connection, and <laughs> when you go to Pandora for the very first time, um, just prepare yourself to be amazed because I think Joe Rody has probably done what nobody could have even imagined uh, with this area of the park, and I'm really excited about it. And then, again, Star Wars 2019, Disneyland, Walt Disney World. How can you not be excited about that? So two big things this week. It's great. Right, right. Well, just so you know, the composer for the music is James Horner. And James has done a tremendous amount of, of uh, soundtrack work. Uh, you might. Um, Didn't he pass away about seven or eight months ago? He did. He passed away in June of 2015. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Time. So, last year. Uh, well, two years ago, I guess. But um, yeah. Yeah, you might know him from. And, and Eric and I would definitely know him because he did the soundtrack for Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. Mm -hmm. Oh, I definitely. I is, love that. Which movie. is great. And he also worked with James Cameron on Avatar and Titanic. Um, you know, the first uh, two films, of course, that reached $2 billion at the box office. He's also worked with uh, the likes of Steven Spielberg and Joe Johnson, Don Bluth, uh, so many, uh, so many soundtracks he's been responsible for over his lifetime. Titanic. But, uh, yeah, Titanic. Yeah. And Aliens as well. Um, Krull, which, you know, I know is a big 80s sci fi uh, underground movie. Cocoon. The uh, Legend Aliens. of Sorrow. Yep. Uh, hey, Kristen, I, I, Kristen I've got an alternate way for you not to watch the movie, but get a good cliff notes, as, as you quoted it, uh, to give you a little bit of a connection when okay. it comes to uh, Avatar and Pandora and everything else. What Disney has done, Disney has launched a website called Alpha Centauri Expeditions, mm -hmm. and it's to help promote the upcoming Avatar ex expansion. It talks about the backstory for the new land, explains uh, a whole bunch of different things, and a brief overview of the Navi River journey and flight of passage. All you got to do is go to visitpandora.com, and, and there you go. You, I think you'll have everything that you need to get you ready for Pandora, the world of Avatar, the Animal Kingdom. So check that out. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty cool if you, you go to the Pandora website. But um, <laughs> my, my, my thing is, is that... Uh, you know, I just can't wait for this this press preview 
uh, or this uh, annual pass holder preview to happen. I hope they do it. We yeah, don't know too. if they're going to do it, but I hope we do. Uh, Chris and I were just there, and I took a picture with my Instagram of the gates of, of Pandora. And it's like, I can't wait to see this open. Now, they have been working at this for quite some time. The technology dates back to the D23 Expo from a couple years back. And um, it just looks amazing. It really does. I know that uh, during our hiatus for the show that they had released an Imagineering uh, piece that had the um, the Navi animatronics or whatever that were involved. And it looked really, really good. Now, you were talking about the, the plushes and the gift shops um, that they might be selling Winnie the Pooh and everything. I'm not so sure they will. <laughs> and I'll tell, and I'll tell you why. Because if it, 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 the timing of this is uh, is interesting because of the shareholders meeting. Uh, Bob Iger dropped these bombs on everybody, which which was interesting enough. You know, he wants people to get excited about returning and booking their trip to Walt Disney World Resort and Disneyland Resorts. But if you look at the standard bearer of immersive entertainment right now, which is, I, I, you know, you look at Cars Land and it's great, but I tell you what's an even bigger franchise than Cars is the Harry Potter experience over there at Universal. And the fact that they opened up, you know, uh, Harry Potter over there at Disney, uh, over at uh, uh, Universal Studios Hollywood recently, and they still are getting a whole lot of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, uh, of buzz and, and money from uh, the Orlando resort. It's so immersive. It's really, really immersive. And you're not going to find like uh, a soda machine just out there with the Coca-Cola or Pepsi logo on it that you can just say, hey, let, let, let me Lady Gaga this all the way to the you know bank, whatever. This is not, <laughs> yeah, this is not, yeah, how about that Super Bowl? Um, right. But I mean, I think it's going to be very immersive. I don't think you're going to find those corporate logos in there because they want to compete on that level. And I don't know if you're going to find, when you walk through that gate, you're going to find the Mickey Mouse and the the poo plushes and all that stuff. I think it's going to look like you walked on the actual planet set with all the stuff that Joe Rody has been doing. What do you guys think? I think it's a possibility, but remember this. When you, when you go into different areas of the Walt Disney World Resorts, and different themed lands, and different attractions, and everything else. Disney always finds a way to get the mouse into it. They always find. So whether or not you see mm. Winnie the Pooh all blue with marks all over him, or it may be goofy or something, I think you're going to see something small. I don't think you're going to see it. Jeff. It's going to happen. I'll, I'll, it's it's going to be you, and, you versus me on this. Because me and you on this one. Me, me and, and you, you on this one. one. Yeah. I don't so. think so. I don't. I think they're going to have it. Like you're going to buy. Have you been? To, have you been to the the Harry Potter experience there, Jeff? I, I did go to. I did went to the one uh, the first part of it. I, did, I haven't been to the oh, second. Oh no! Okay, the second one. The first second part is where. Yeah, the second part is where it's happened because their sodas are branded. Their potato chips are branded. It doesn't have any markings like it's made by Lay's. It doesn't have any of that stuff at all. Um, the merchandise. You're not going to see any Transformers merchandise being stole, sold at the the Hogwarts Express area. You're not going to see any of that stuff. Um, it's all going to be Harry Potter merchandise. So I'm, you know, if they want to compete on that level, I have a feeling that your your their big thing is immersiveness, uh, interaction, and and um, that that type of uh, that type of experience where you forget literally that you are at a theme park that you are in the world. And I believe the same thing can be said about star Wars. I don't think you're going to find <laughs> oh, the cross merchandise well, in, the, in the star Wars park. I don't, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to love it. If Disney really surprises you in it and if throws they, you for they, a curveball on this if one, they do, if they do, <laughs> if great, they do, but I don't think a, they will. No, I think if they do it, it's a big mistake. It's a big mistake if they do because it, it, it takes be you mistake. out of it yeah. and it will it continue to make Harry Potter be the best section of any theme park out there okay guys <clears throat> and lady i'm just going to read a quote to you here you leave today and enter the world of yesterday tomorrow and fantasy you know where that plaque's at magic kingdom it's, it's right as you walk in the door to disney you know where it should be right now as you walk in to diagon alley yep Oh yeah, 
yeah. because now you can say what you want. Universal out Disneyed Disney with some when it Disney's came to the Harry Potter thing. Now, I agree with you in the fact that they need to keep Mickey, Donald, Goofy, especially freaking Anna and Elsa, the crap out of, An of pa Pandora. Here's the rant. Okay. You really need, this is something that Disney needs to get back to doing because at one point in time, they were the unparalleled masters of leaving today and entering the world of yesterday, tomorrow, and fantasy. That was before the days of every freaking gift shop's got to have poo plush. Every freaking gift shop's got to have something frozen. They don't care anymore. They don't care about immersing you in the fantasy. They don't care about immersing you in the setting. We have seen it. We've seen it in World Showcase where they put uh, they took away Sea Base Alpha and they put in Nemo and Friends. We saw it in Mexico where they took out Mexico and they put in three caballeros. They don't care. I, okay, I shouldn't say they don't care, period. They don't care as much. But Pandora gives them an opportunity to get back to doing that voodoo that they used to do so well. <laughs> Good job, Eric. Good. The question, and this is the burning question, is whether or not they will allow themselves to do it because they know. If they do, they will miss out on the little kid who wants to buy an Elsa in the middle of Pandora. They miss out on the little kid who wants to buy a Winnie the Pooh plush in the middle of Pandora. But if they, if, if they do it, it's like you said, if they bring that stuff in, I don't mind a hidden Mickey here and there. I really don't. I mean, it's right. Disney World. Hidden Mickey's, I can understand. Yeah. Hidden Mickey's, are, Mickey's are great. Yeah, they're hidden. That's not hidden Mickey's. I just, I want to see a complete absence of traditional Disney merchandise in the shops. I, I have trust issues anyway. I don't know that I can trust Disney to do it. Oh, yeah. That, that's an interesting conversation. Jeff, uh, Kristen, well, let's go with Kristen since we haven't heard from you. Um, do you feel that they're going to be able to separate church and state in this particular case? I sure hope so. I sure hope so. It It is something that they should have learned from Universal of what that has done in the fandom and the money that it has brought in for Harry Potter because of it being completely immersive. Nothing from the outside world, nothing that does not exist in the Harry Potter world is in Harry Potter. You're I not mean, find it's, a Coca Cola can out there. No, you can't, you can't. You can't find, find anything <laughs> like that. Everything, you know, you've got pumpkin juice and butter beer. I mean, everything is truly immersive in that and it would be a big mistake a very sad mistake for disney to not do that with star wars and pandora they need to go back to like eric said what they used to i remember when you would get off splash mountain and you could buy plushes of the different characters and you could get a t-shirt you could buy beach towels all kinds of things that had to do with splash mountain and now it's it's not that way. And to me, there's a benefit also to Disney going back to that when people know that they want to look for something like, oh, I want to find this. They don't have to go into every gift store looking for it. They know if I'm looking for something that has to do with an attraction and the characters in it, I can go to Pooh's area, and at the end of that attraction, I can go in that gift shop and I will find myself the Winnie the Pooh thing I am looking for. I don't have to go in there also searching for something with stupid Elsa on it that I know 
And if you're looking to have everything in one place, that's what the Emporium and Main Street and that those shops are for to carry that stuff as well. But they Mercantile. need to go back to the, <laughs> the shops being what they used to be. If you were looking for villains, you went to Villains in Vogue in Hollywood Studios. And where can you get that stuff now? <gasps> I don't know. Nowhere. Nowhere. <laughs> Nowhere. It, it's turned into generic merchandise central everywhere. The, th the thing is, is that, and, and, and I'll leave it this. <laughs> Disney does not miss out on an opportunity in any of their resorts or any of their attractions or any of the parks to offer their iconic merchandise, their iconic characters in any way, shape, or form. You're That's probably true. still going to see Goofy's Candy. It may be themed a little bit differently, but you're still going to see Goofy's Candy. Oh, well, you may yeah. See, I mean, the day that they put Mickey ears on an astro droid the day they put those on an astro droid ruined it it ruined it because it's supposed to be star wars merchandise not star wars mickey merchandise not star wars mickey I, this and everything. i didn't agree with it and I, I didn't like it well i don't i don't you know i don't I, and i don't i i see your point but it made sense if the Disney characters were dressed up in their their Star Wars theme for Star Wars weekends and Mar R two D two Jedi R two uh, Mickey Mouse had his own R two M K unit. Granted, but that's the only but, time you ever see it, unless of course you're yeah. buying it at a gift shop now. I mean, you can you used to be able to buy R two M K in a, in a droid pack with, with Jedi Mickey with the action figure set. So, you know, but I, I understand that point. But I think that if you do see Goofy's candy, it'll probably be repackaged. It, not without Goofy's, you know, face or anything. It's going to be like Pandora treats or whatever brought to you by, you know, the Pandora people, you know, and, uh, you know, so they, they do have an opportunity, but I think you, you guys are right. They, they have an opportunity to get back into doing something really, really special and immersive and only time will tell whether or not the other merchandise will creep in. I hope that's not the case. And that will depend on if they continually, uh, do groundbreaking things to keep people at the parks and to maintain a very high level of immersive and interactive experiences for their guests. You know, um, we shall we shall see. I hope that's not the case, Jeff. I hope that, uh, you know, we're not going to find a generic gift shop uh, there uh, every two feet. Well, I, I, I don't think it'll be generic. I don't think it'll be generic. <clears throat> I think it'll be themed to that area. Uh, you're not just dealing with the inhabitants of, of, of Pandora, you know, the Navi themselves. Uh, you also have to remember there was a military element there as well. Uh, yep. So you could find Mickey in fatigues or uh, the different types of vehicles that they used in the movie or the robots and, and other little things uh, that could be incorporated with the characters. That would not surprise me to see as well. Um, again, it, it's hard to say, but like I said, Disney doesn't miss an opportunity to put their iconic characters into everything they do. Yeah, and 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 let's 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 see now. Okay, so playing devil devil's advocate, Jeff, you say that. What is your personal preference? Do you want it to be there, or you because th you're saying that's what they may do, or they that's what they may have a tendency of doing? What is your what is your purpose? I mean, what what do you think? Are they gonna? Do you think that uh, it's best for business or not? It's bet it's best for Disney's business when it comes to making money because you know they love the almighty dollar. They love okay. that dollar. They love that money you spend. Um, but when as many times as we've seen Joe Rody talk about this area of the animal kingdom, and we have seen other imagineers talking about it, they say it's an experience like you've never imagined before. You step into a completely different world, new right. technologies, all this new stuff. Well, guess what? If you're going to do that, it's like you guys said with Harry Potter. That area of the park that you've been to at Universal that I haven't had the opportunity to go to, all I ever hear about it is that when you step into Diagon Alley, I think that's the name of it, is, yep. is that correct? Yeah. When you step into it, you don't realize that you're in Universal at all. You think literally you are on Diagon Alley, that yes. there is nowhere else. That's where you have ended up. And... I th what Disney has done is they've taken that opportunity. They've created it, I'm sure. 
but they're not going to resist putting all that other stuff in there. Do I want to see it myself? No, it has no business being in there. When I go to Pandora, I don't expect to see stuff from Mickey Mouse to Goofy or Elsa or anything else. I expect everything in there to be Pandora, everything to be Avatar. Yeah, you see, that's, where, that's what I'm getting that, at. That, yeah, that's what I, th I want. Do I think that's what Disney's going to do? No, I don't. Okay. That that's yeah. that's the that's that's where I'm trying to get at. <laughs> that's so, a pretty big leopard to change its spots. <laughs> it is. And, and I, Al John, I take I take exception with one thing you said. It's not just that they have an opportunity to get back to what they used to do best. No, sir. It's not just an opportunity. It's an obligation. Nah. It is an obligation to the legacy of the company that they represent. It is an obligation to the fans who after decade after decade of getting excellence, expect excellence, demand excellence. It's not just an opportunity. It's an obligation. And I wish I could, yeah. the question, <laughs> the question is, they can they cannot live up to that obligation if they put in the generic merchandise. I don't think it'll be generic. I don't think it'll be generic. Just stuff that you can get from the world of Disney Store, I don't think will be there. But I still think you will see Mickey and the gang themed to Pandora. Now, you know, they did change... Point. When they opened up New Fantasyland, they did change the way they did Bonjour Gifts. Because that specifically had everything Beauty and the Beast and nothing else. Mm -hmm. And they do still have the Haunted Mansion gift shop. Um, yeah. Strictly Haunted still, Mansion stuff. Yeah. Strictly Haunted uh, Mansion stuff, which I love. It's a is Memento, it Memento Mori. Mori? Memento mm -hmm. Mori. So it's not like they can't. And pirates. Uh, yeah, right. right. Yeah, it's not like they, they, they're not able to, but do they want to? Are they going to? Is it, Are they going to do what Eric suggests and live up to, uh, you know, legacy of, uh, you know, of Walt? We'll, we'll have to see. Now, that is strictly for uh, Pandora. What do you think is going to be done about Star Wars? Now that that once again, it's another, it's a bigger franchise, and one could argue the biggest franchise in the world. Just look at the box office numbers. The biggest box office franchise in the world today, Star Wars. You just had Star Wars Rogue One reach several, what it's five hundred billion dollars gross. What a like, movie! It's, it's creeped up into the top five. Uh, largest films of all time yeah. uh, or something like that. Maybe top seven, something like that. If I, if I remember the variety article that I read, but what a movie, you know, Pandora is one thing, you know, and let's hope that they, they keep it themed appropriately. Star Wars is a culture, right? Star Wars is literally a culture. It is a way of life. For so many people. And a following like no other on the planet. Literally. Stretching from the furthest regions of Canada to the tip, 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 tip bottom of South America, you will find Star Wars. And all and the rest of the world as well. That's how big it is. Did you guys know that during our hiatus that Disney had struck a deal with uh, James Cameron to make sure that none of their films were going to conflict with the release of Avatar? Did you know For that? Star Wars films? They actually had changed over some of their the Disney film slate in order to make sure that all of their company synergy was going to be all about Marvel, all about Star Wars, all about Disney, all about avatar and that those those things shall not intermix to take away from each other's box office that doesn't surprise know. me yeah doesn't surprise me at all but but having said that you know it's something to think about you know 
you're right. I mean, and, and we said it before, you know, Star Wars is the biggest, uh, probably one of the biggest uh, cultural pop icon phenomenons to, to happen. Um, there and- is so much Star Wars merchandise out there and so many things that can be done with merchandise. There would be no reason for them to need to add anything else in. She's I right. mean, yeah. oh my gosh, yeah. the amount of stuff. Yeah. Ugh. Star Wars yeah. weekends alone showed the potential of what is put into merchandising when it comes to Star Wars. And stuff sold out like they were giving it away for free. Didn't matter what the price of it was. It was gone, and it was gone quick. That's right. One of their their yeah. biggest merchandise sellers is Star Wars Weekends, and I know that it's not uh, been a big deal for them as of late because, you know, the the specialty, uh, the the specialness of that particular event over the course of time really helped uh, studios with their merchandise sales uh, be one of the top events uh, for, for fans. But I tell you what, we shall see how this all comes to fruition. There is more information uh, at the D23 Disney Parks blog, and of course, my uh, site at JediMouseketeer.com. Be sure to check all of that out and listen to Sorcerer Radio, where all of us are DJs. We're going to be talking about this probably over the course of the next few weeks um, as we move into the uh, Valentine's Day season, if you will. Uh, once again, we encourage everybody to continue shopping and supporting our show there at www.afterdark.com and uh, check out when new episodes are launched on a weekly basis. Eric, where can people find you to interact with you on the interwebs? Well, you can find me on Twitter at at Sorcom Review or at Uncle Servo. Uh, you can find the Sorcom Review's Facebook page, <laughs> shockingly enough, on Facebook. And uh, you'd also give me a shout out in the Sorcerer Radio Disney Fun Zone there on Facebook. That's right. Uh, Eric goes live every Tuesday with the Sorcom Review and uh, also Mighty Marvel Geeks and uh, uh, so please check out those particular programs. Kristen, and, where can people find... Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Eric. No, I'm, I'm sorry, I was going to add in that next week the Sorcom Review will be the Valentine's Day edition because it happens to be Valentine's Day. That's right. We have a very historic week coming up here on Sorcerer Radio as uh, uh, you know, we, we are doing all kinds of really cool stuff. I'll have Jeff take it, take it away now. Jeff, uh, you're also on Sorcerer Radio as well. I am. Uh, Things happen on Thursday mornings promptly at 8 a.m. Eastern time is when you can hear me. Uh, You've got DW60, Great Walt Disney World music halfway through the show. The headlines are the premiere of the show, and that's when press row happens and uh, a lot of discussion, uh, a lot of uh, rumors, a lot of ranting, all kinds of different things involved when it comes to the show. So I I encourage you to check that out. You can follow the show on Twitter at DW underscore. Or 60. Listen to the replay that night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Next week, we celebrate the sweet 16 birthday of Sorcerer Radio next week for the show. Uh, so that is going to be a fantastic time when I have to pull some uh, music from the 80s to uh, specifically, probably from the movie, uh, you know, 16 Candles, I'm thinking, uh, during the show <laughs> at some point. Uh, to, uh, to help celebrate a little bit, I'm probably going to have, uh, I'm going to try and have DJ Sorcy on with me at some point. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But okay. uh, make sure you check it out. It's going to be great. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, it's going to be a great, uh, great week of programming on Sorcerer Radio. Uh, Kristen, you've got podcasts, you've got shows, uh, and you've got a website. What's up? Uh, you can find me at Dining at Disney on all of your favorite social media platforms, Dining at Disney, except for YouTube. It's the Dining at Disney, as well as you can find Bubba and I on iTunes and Stitcher. You can listen to the Dining at Disney podcast there. Very good. And uh, you can find Kristen and myself as we host WDW Teak Room. We're back once again um, in full force. We're going to do uh, some trip reports over the course of the next few weeks and have some special guests uh, in the near future, talking about their books and upcoming things. So you can check us out at www.tigroom.com Fridays at 8 a.m. Eastern on Source of Radio and then on demand on iTunes as well as Stitcher. And uh, you can also check out my site, JediMasketeer.com, because uh, Lord knows that uh, I am a huge Star Wars fan. 
Uh, so, so please check that out at JediMasketeer.com. Everyone, thank you so much for tuning in at WDW After Dark on demand at WDWAfterDark.com. Please like, share, and subscribe to our shows and shop and support all of our sponsors, including Kristen there at MagicalJourneysVacations.com and Amazon. Thank you so much for your support. And until next time, may the force be with you. And don't forget, it's better after dark. We'll see you next time. Take care.